Good afternoon, groovy citizens of Earth, and happy Saturday. You guys, it is cold. It is very cold. Right now it's 27 degrees, and it's going to drop down, I believe, if I remember correctly, I looked at the weather app, and it's going to be like 21 degrees tomorrow. And so if you live in the DMV area, then you know that we are looking at snow. And they're saying that anything that touches the ground is going to freeze because it's going to be so cold. Now, initially, at the beginning of the week, they said Sunday night into Monday morning. Now it's changed because when I looked at the weather app before I came out the house, it said that there's a 40% chance of snow, I think it was at 2 o'clock. And then a 50% chance at three o'clock. So let me just say this. If you have to go out and do anything, get anything, I suggest you be about the business of trying to get it done now or getting up early in the morning to do it because bad weather is coming. So let's jump into today's topic because I got about 45 minutes and I need to be headed out to my next destination. So today's topic is practice makes improvement. Now, I know I got somebody on that one because you thought I was going to say practice makes perfect. But can I just tell you that we're not a perfect people. Nothing that you will ever do will be perfect. But practice can make improvement. So here's a quote by Les Brown. And he says, you can always better your best. You can always go beyond anything that you have ever done. And then he asked the question, and so are you looking for new breakthroughs to practice and practice some more? you will get better and better. So I just wanted to talk to you guys for the next few minutes about taking what you already do and practicing it to improve it. I don't know about you. I remember there was a point in time in my life where I wanted to, to just be uh, perfect at everything I did. But guess what? The reality is, like I said, there are no perfect people. We are all flawed in our own way. And so your practicing will only allow you to improve. And, and I know I talk about the gym a lot, but I think about, I think back to, I think it's been what, seven, eight years now, when I first started working out with my coach, Mike Jones, I was okay. Well, when I first started working with him, I, I was working, training with someone else. And so Reggie had gotten me to a point. Y'all, I just thought I was hot stuff because I could touch 500 pounds on the leg press. I was like, oh, yes, y'all, I am strong. And so I was strong anyway. And then I started working out at World Gym when it was up here in Largo. And that's how I met my coach, Mike Jones. And he took me from where I was and we practice and we practice and we practice some more. And so I took what I came to the table with and I improved on it. It's still not perfect because I still work on my squat. I still work on my deadlift. I still work on my bench. But all of my practicing has, has caused me to improve in all three of those areas. All of my practicing has caused me to become stronger just all over and I'm thankful for that so I just wanted to just talk for the next few minutes about practicing to to improve so maybe you have some decent cooking skills now y'all know I don't cook can cook don't cook and I'm not interested in learning now if I practice I could improve on where I am which is not very far but I'm okay with that because I'm, I'm not interested in learning how to cook I, I'm definitely okay with that but again, if I practice, I could improve on my cooking skills. If I wanted to learn, for some reason, calligraphy popped in my mind. I don't know how to write in calligraphy. I think it is beautiful. I love to, to watch videos of people, you know, practicing calligraphy. And you can buy books too, believe it or not, to learn how to, to write that way. If I wanted to get into that, I could practice it and, and get good at it. So I just wanted to leave you with that thought today that anything, and I mean anything worth having or worth doing is worth practicing. And stop always looking for perfection because like I said, we are a flawed group of people. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you grew up, doesn't matter who you know, who your mom and daddy is. We're all a flawed people, but you can improve. And there's always room for improvement. We can all improve in, in our love lives. We can improve in our finances. We can improve in our businesses. We can improve in our health. Come on, somebody. We can improve in, like I said, the list can just go on and on and on. 
but 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 the thing is is that you have to practice see i can't just say oh I, let me say this i could not just say i want to do videos and not practice because when I first got started, my very first video that I did, I'm gonna be honest with you all, it took me 23 tries to get that video right. But see, I was looking for perfection. And if I said, um, or use any filler word, nope, that wasn't good enough, I had to delete, start all over. I had to charge up the battery in my camera twice to get that video done. And I remember getting so frustrated, I kept saying, Lord, please let me get this right. I have no problem standing in a room full of people talking about anything. But getting in front of that camera for some strange reason was just so difficult, but I had to practice that now I feel comfortable. And I'm oftentimes asked, Michelle, how do you feel so comfortable getting in front of the video, like, I'm getting in front of the camera like that? And I said, you know why? Because I've been doing it so long. I've been doing it so long that I feel so comfortable doing it, but it took practice it's just like many of you know that i am an ordained deacon yes i said deacon i didn't say deaconess i know typically women are deaconesses but i don't have a husband and even if i did he's not a deacon so i am an ordained deacon at the metropolitan baptist church we do have women ordained deacons and so i was ordained a deacon in 2008 i believe it was it was 2008 and so at least maybe once, at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, part of our job was to get up and stand in on that podium, not the one where the pastor preaches, but the one off to the side. And you had to do the centering prayer. And for those of you that have no idea what a centering prayer is, the centering prayer is really where you are just ushering in the Holy Spirit into the worship services. Now, when you get up there and pray for everybody and their mama, and every situation going on in the world, although some people do, but it's just really ushering the Holy Spirit into the worship service. And so I remember the first time I had to do it, I thought, oh my goodness. I, I, don't, I said, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. Now I can pray, don't get me wrong, I can pray. That's not a problem. But getting up here and doing this in front of people, but guess what? Every time I was called to get up and pray, it gave me practice. We have we've had times where since we've been here in Largo, that someone was supposed to pray, but they didn't make it. They didn't come to church. So now it's kind of like, okay, you know, you just jump into action and you say, okay, I'll do it, and you just get up and you and you do the centering prayer. But again, it took practice. So now I have no problems. So now that, let's fast forward, we've been in this situation where we're in this, in this pandemic situation. And so part of my responsibilities as a deacon is to still, when it's my turn, do the centering prayer. Now I'm not on the schedule for the first quarter, but I'm probably be on there for the second quarter sometime. So we have to uh, make sure your lighting is good. I have all kinds of tripods. And I take my phone, I set it up, and then I have to do what I would do if I was in the church. And I may start off by saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us go to the throne of grace. And then so, you know, you, you bow your head, your eyes are closed, and you're praying. Well, the first time I had to do that, again, it took me, y'all, my hand to God, I'm not even going to lie to you, it took me about 30 times to get that right. Because I would get, I would start out praying and my mind would wander to something else. I'm thinking, Michelle, what in the heck did I have to do with anything? So now I have to, and then so many times I had to laugh at myself to keep from crying, to be honest with you. So I just deleted it, started all over again. Deleted, started all over. And finally, you know, I got it right. And I had, to, I had to tell myself, Michelle, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you say, um, it's all right. You don't have to be long-winded with it. Because again, all you're doing is ushering in the Holy Spirit. But it took practice. And so because I've been practicing at it, and I've had many times to do it, and I'm talking about why we've been in this pandemic season, it's like, it's, it's, I can just fire it off just like that. It's not a big deal at all. So again, I said all of that to say to, to everybody, and I need you to really hear me, anything that you're doing, if you want to get better at it, you want to improve at it, I need you to practice. If you want to become a better singer, a better cook, a better basketball player, a better football player, a better gymnast, a better painist, 
paintings. What is that? A better painter, a better artist, a better writer, whatever it is that you want to get better at, I need you to practice. And we're not practicing to become perfect. We're practicing to improve on whatever it is that we're doing. Because I promise you, the more you practice, the better you'll get. So that's it, you guys. You guys, that's all I have. I'm gonna end up this this um, this this vlog because, like I said, I do have some place I need to be, and I need to get in here and upload it and all that good stuff. But I want you all to go out there, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Like I said, you live in an area where they call in for snow. Please make sure you have all of the necessities. Check your cabinets. Check your cupboards. Make sure you have enough food. You have enough water. Uh, toilet paper, all that other good stuff, toothpaste, everything that you're going to need. So just in case you can't get out the house for the next couple of days, because like I said, they're starting calling for snow to start around 2, 3 tomorrow. I don't know for sure. The weather's been changing all week. All I do know is that it is coming. And whatever touches the ground, they're saying it's going to turn to ice. So, you know, between tomorrow night and Monday. Monday morning and so whatever you need to get please get it so that you have all that you need and and as you do that I need you all to find one thing I'm pretty sure you have more but find one thing that you can practice and improve on it could be your speaking skills it could be how you interact with people maybe you're an introvert and you don't speak up for yourself much but find one thing that you can practice and improve on and I promise you that you will see the world in a completely different light. That's all I have, you guys. That's my time. If you're new to watching my videos, I want to say thank you for joining me. Welcome and come on back because I typically blog every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. I say Saturday because I did say Saturday morning, but now it's just Saturday. And every now and then on a Tuesday or Thursday, if I have something burning, I want to share with you guys. If this is not your first rodeo, welcome back. I missed you guys. It's so good to see you all one more time. Go out there. Again, enjoy the rest of the day. Do whatever it is you have to do to get prepared for the weather wherever you live. Wherever you live. But go out there and find one thing that you can practice and improve on. And I promise you'll thank me for it later. Until our vlog on Monday, take care.